Yeah, well, my name is Kai Hudala. I really work for Bosch, uh, a subsidiary, a small subsidiary, Bosch Software Innovations, and we are basically dealing with uh, implementing core technology for connecting the stuff that Bosch builds that pro you guys probably know, the, the household appliances, the stuff that's in the cars, whatever, uh, heating systems, and to connect that to the Internet of Things. Um, and uh, yeah, some years ago we have decided that we think that we should do that in a, yeah, based on open source technology. So many of you probably know that you can today use services from Amazon or Microsoft Azure or IBM to connect your devices to their cloud systems. But for Bosch, as being a manufacturer of these devices, this is uh, kind of problematic because it means that we are giving up the attach point of the devices to some third party who is then in control of the data that goes through there and whatever. So we think that we really need to base our efforts on, on open source technology in order to be able to yeah, set, set up a, a cloud stack where the devices connect to on whatever infrastructure we want, in particular our own. So, and this is uh, why we started this, and this is why we are engaging in the IoT Working Group at Eclipse. And uh, indeed, I will talk today about um, how we take many of the technologies that we are working on in the IoT Working Group and bring that towards a, a, a scalable cloud platform. So, and uh, by the way, this is really me. That was uh, when I was good looking and younger, but yeah. So let's start with a simple question. How many technologies do you think you need to know in order to communicate with all things connected to the IT? So Benjamin already introduced that it's probably a lot, but I would like to plant the idea into your head that it's just one, Eclipse Hono. And uh, it's really not just Eclipse Hono, but you also need some secret sauce, which comes from the other Eclipse IoT projects. And uh, I will show you how that works. So Eclipse Hono is a project that we started in March, I guess, and it's about providing a, a uniform API to millions of the devices that you want to connect to to the cloud using arbitrary communication protocols. So the arbitrary communication protocols is actually what the devices use, but what you want to use is a uniform API in order to connect it. So it's basically about abstracting away the diversity of the communication protocols. Before we dive into how that really works, so where that is applicable, I would like to talk about some characteristics of communication with uh, IoT devices. So the things, they, they usually are not connected permanently, but they often, at least the Bosch things I'm talking about, they, they come alive for a certain amount of time, several seconds, and they send out some, some sensor data, and then they go back to sleep. So the predominant use case is actually really from left to right, the upload of the telemetry data. And the telemetry data is often yeah, delivered as kind of a stream every five to 10 seconds or every five minutes or every hour, whatever. But if you miss out on one of these, it's usually not a big problem because the next value is coming after a certain amount of time. So what you probably leave out or miss out is yeah, just a glitch in the, in, the, in the statistics then. However, what is important is that because it's so many devices that you optimize that for throughput, that you are able to actually get all of these, uh, these uh, discrete signals um, close to real time, or at least with very low latency. And uh, the scale out here is in the number of messages that you, in the number of devices. And the other direction, the command and control direction, is also very important, but you, you see by means of the, the, the size of the arrows that uh, the telemetry is by orders of magnitude larger than the other one. And that is because you usually set up your device once only every month or every few months or whatever. But uh, when you do so, you want to make sure that the command or the control that you sent there actually is received and is, is acknowledged and that it takes an effect. So um, the, the thing that you want to optimize, therefore, is reliability. And the scale out is usually with the number of devices because that is what you usually do with kind of a message queue. You have a message queue per device where you want to send out com commands and then you want to receive uh, back the, the responses there. So Hono basically is about making this possible so that you have these different scale out for the telemetry direction and the command and control direction and that you have a uniform API on the right hand side in order to be able to talk to the things from the cloud. So let me give you some examples from our Bosch experience from the Bosch life. So this is a, a power drill and each of these costs about 600 euro. Uh, you might have noticed that this is a blue device. You have seen probably many of the green devices which you have at home. So this is the professional series. This is the, the, the expensive stuff. 
And these tend to get lost somehow at construction sites. <laughs> at night, when people go home, the, 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 the tools are gone. So uh, what we want to provide a, as a service is uh, yeah, being able to, uh, to, to really track these tools, to know where they are in order to be, make sure that when you leave at night, you'll, you, you get your tools back. So what, you, what we try to implement is a track my tools service and it might be implemented like this. Um, we attach Bluetooth LE tags to the devices, to the, to the tools, and uh, using a standard smartphone with a little app on it, we connect to the backend by MQTT, and in the backend we are running Hono and a protocol adapter. And the protocol adapter is a generic concept in Hono that we use to abstract away the particular communication protocol. So in this case, it might be using MQTT. You get the location data from the devices via MQTT in the backend, and then you have an application that sits north of Hono and uses the uniform API, which is based on AMQP 1.0 to, to, uh, to read the, the location data of the devices. Another example, finding a parking space in a large city. So statistics show that you often drive up to 4.5 kilometers around in the city before you find a parking space. So, and that is mainly because you do not know where a vacant parking space is. So in order to change that, we are trying to install these sensors here in large parking garages which uh, are able to detect whether a car is on top of it or not. So these are connected to a central gateway via LoRa, uh, which is a, a radio-based protocol which can penetrate concrete walls and whatever, so in a garage you can easily do that. And they can connect to a gateway where we deploy, where we use Cura. And uh, then Cura is connecting to the back end to another protocol adapter, which is based on Leshan using Lightwood n 2 m And again, it's connected to Hono, and you can then manage these devices, these sensors, using your application, which again also only talks to Hono using AMQP 1.0. And in this example, I've added a Hawkbit as well, because in this example, it is important for us to be able to, to download and to update the firmware of the sensors as well. And that is what we use Hawkbit for, to manage campaigns of, of rolling out these, uh, these firmware updates. So, Bosch is producing over a million things per day, every day. So, these are not all connected to the IoT today, but in the future it will be more and more the case that these things that we produce can be or could be connected to, to an IoT application. So, in order to support that, we need to have a system that can scale out horizontally, and this is the main thing that we are concerned about. Um, the technology to set up an application, an, an, an enterprise scale application with hundreds or thousands of devices is already available. But doing that for millions of things and scaling out horizontally, that is what, what Hono is about and what the whole effort of creating the IoT stack in the cloud is all about. So the idea here is that you can add more instances of Hono and more instances of the protocol adapters simply to add more, more device connectivity. So the overall goal is then to have ready to deploy components, microservice based components that you can use to, to set up your own cloud or to, to deploy to any cloud platform that you want, to, to Amazon, to, to Microsoft, whatever. So we're working on Hono together with Red Hat in order to make that happen, for example, for OpenShift or plain Docker based infrastructure. For, our, for ourselves, we also want to make that happen on open uh, on Cloud Foundry. And uh, this is how it then looks in an aggregated picture, basically. So I've taken the use cases before and, and put them into, into the same picture. And what you now see is that the central attach point now for the applications in the backend is Hono. And you always have the same API that you use in order to interact with the devices. And in the middle layer, you see the protocol adapters. And uh, I've put some examples here, MQTT, Lightwood M2M, or REST. Um, the MQTT one could be based on, for example, Mosquito or uh, Moquette, which is, which is another Eclipse IoT project for implementing MQTT as an embeddable library. Uh, we are shipping a REST adapter with Hono as well, so that you can use plain HTTP REST calls to, to upload data, which is particularly interesting for doing testing or volume testing, whatever, prototyping. And uh, we also want to connect uh, Cura to I'm uh, uh, sorry, to, to use Leshan as a, as a lightweight into m adapter, but that is something that we're currently working on to integrate it with, uh, with Hono. Okay, so this is an overview of the technologies that come to mind in this. Uh, 
Some of them you have seen, PAO as an MQTT client, uh, Hono, Cura, Cloud, uh, Californium. Californium is the co-op implementation that lives beneath uh, Leshan, which is used to, to implement the, the co-op based traffic. Yeah, that's all that. And then we have time for some questions. So as always with open source software, it depends on yourself whether you want to use it today. But I would say we have, we're currently working or we have finished most of the work for the telemetry direction. So for uploading telemetry data, it's uh, in pretty good shape. We are currently adding uh, security, meaning being able to authorize on, on, on the tenant level for individual devices. So you can use that in a multi-tenant environment where you partition your devices into tenants, being belonging to tenants and that you can authorize access to the system based on tenants. That is what we're currently adding. Um, our goal is to provide a first release this year, which would definitely include the telemetry direction and security, and then add later the command and control direction. A roadmap. Um, I used to have a roadmap <laughs> when we started in, uh, in March, but we're already behind that a little, so uh, I'm a little hesitant to give you a concrete date. So, yeah, I would say expect something by maybe October for EclipseCon Europe. Yeah. End of October, yeah. That is true, and I explicitly left that out on, on, on this slide, for example. So, Capua actually deals with what you do with the application mostly, or managing the devices. So, Capua, we were already talking to the guys, to the Eurotech people who, who bring in Capua into Eclipse, and we want to attach Capua at this side to, to Hono. So, we want to use Hono in order to provide device connectivity for Capua. So, can you just give a brief introduction Yeah, so Capua is a, basically a full stack for a, an IoT backend where you have device connectivity, device registry, data management. Um, uh, an application API, um, what do you have as well? I think a little data analytics, rules-based automation, but it's, to the, as of today, it's mostly a, a monolithic stack. It's, it, it comes from an enterprise world, and we're now trying to re-architect that into a microservice-based architecture. And in particular, we want to connect and integrate with Hono so that we can leverage the device abstraction and the scale-out of Hono in order to feed the data into, into Capua. Um, I think that is mainly based on the limitations of the LoRa protocol, so I think that is maybe once every few minutes or something, something like that. Oh, I think they are starting to do that in Stuttgart, at Bosch's headquarters, yeah. Uh, however, just was saying, I, I don't think they are really live yet, but they are, they are working on that by means of prototyping and, and stuff. But, but the sensors are de fully designed and they can manufacture them. So this will happen, yes. Oh, oh okay. So it's based on AMQP 1.0, but we have designed an API, for example, for uploading the telemetry data or retrieving it. So we have designed a set of messages and message exchanges and uh, properties that you need to put into the, mes to the messages in order to, to make that happen. Because just saying, Using AMQP 1.0, you can do everything the wrong way. So that is exactly the main purpose of, of, of designing these APIs. But, but we chose to use AMQP 1.0 because it, it, it felt very well suited for the use case, in particular the flow control that is, that is in there that enables uh, yeah, doing the, the, the uploading of the telemetry in the right way, I guess. Well, it's basically, they, they, they have different origins. But many of the people involved are the same. So, for example, me, myself, I'm the project lead of Hono. I'm a committer in, in Leshan. I'm a committer in California. I do know the people working on, on, uh, on, on Capua, for example. So, they're, they're, they're close ties, and we are all working in the IoT working group together. So. And from a technical perspective, that is actually quite a challenge because many of these technologies actually come from 
an enterprise scale problem. So they have been designed to solve an enterprise scale problem, whereas we want to now take it to a, to a cloud scale problem. And you may or may not know, or at least my opinion is that in order to make that, that transition, you have to some, at some point employ other technologies. You, you cannot do it in a way that you would do it for an enterprise scale application. You have to change the whole architecture of the thing then. That is true, yes. So when you say Cura payloads, you, you're talking about the, the, the protocol they employ over MQTT? Uh, so yeah, the, the MQTT protocol. Yeah. Uh, the Cura payload is actually Yeah. So, so Hono itself is totally payload agnostic. Hono doesn't care what the payload itself is. Um, so at some point in time, we could say, okay, in Cura, let's not only support using native MQ, MQTT-based communication, but also implement a client for, for Hono in Cura. So that would definitely be in scope for the Hono project, but right now I am not working on it. But if you think that is a valuable addition, I would agree. So you're more than welcome to join it. <laughs> I think it really depends on the application domain, and if you ask particularly about Industry 4.0, my personal feeling is that this will be some years from now, but that is mainly because of the the state that the manufacturing industry is in. So having machinery that is even connected to a network is, is actually an exception. So, so this is basically technology for the future, if you will. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, for, for, our home, for a home automation solution, for example, Hawkbit is used to roll out firmware updates, exactly. For, for, for the parking sensor stuff, we are using Leshan in order to, to do the communication. So that is, that is going into production, but uh, it's not like we, we have that f f for years running. That is not but the case. Thank you very much, Kai. And, and um, I think it was a great, great presentation. So.